This is not a sponsored video. Gear review! I don't even know if this counts as gear, but <laughs> whatever. Hey guys, it's Lou, sweetest photographer in the game. If you've been following along with this channel for a while, you know that I am a Lightroom user. I love Adobe Lightroom. I have a lot of great things to say about it, but it feels like the longer I use it, the more I find these little annoying things. And these little annoying things have kind of snowballed and evolved into uh, what we would say in the industry, a uh, clusterfuck. In two words, my biggest gripe with Lightroom is Drum roll, please. The darn thing can just be really slow sometimes. Slow imports, slower exports, lag when you're scrolling through the catalog, slow previews for presets. It's a slow program, and it feels like they find a way to make it slower every update. And I have a pretty decent computer too, specs are on the screen. Also the whole Lightroom Classic versus Lightroom Creative Cloud, it's, it's so st it's stupid. And just so that this whole video isn't dedicated to me complaining about Lightroom, this website I love, the faux blographer, wrote an article comparing Lightroom Classic CC8 to an abusive relationship. I think they hit a ton of really good points in it and I'm linking to the article below for you to check out if you want to. But anyway, I've heard a ton about Luminar, which is a relatively new-ish two-year-old program that is apparently a competitor to Lightroom. And since Black Friday just passed, <laughs> oh boy, I got a sick $10 off. So let's just jump into it and see if Luminar can replace Lightroom. Starting out here, a big difference about Luminar is the pricing. It's not a yearly subscription, it's actually a one-time purchase. You buy the license, you can install it on five computers, and you get the updates. That's it. Well, until late 2019, apparently. As opposed to the roughly 120 bucks a year you spend for Lightroom. You might have discounts as a student or a teacher or whatever, but the price difference is a big deal. Once you jump into Luminar, you get a familiar Adobe-style welcome screen. Milky Way's there, that's, that's a good sign. But you'll quickly realize right out of the gate, one of the absolute biggest cons to the program, there's no library. This is so sad. But dry those tears, according to their roadmap on their website, libraries are coming in December 2018. Shit, that's next week, that's awesome. But in all seriousness, the library is one of my favorite things about Lightroom. Losing the library is a big deal to me, and if that update gets nixed or if it gets delayed and pushed, that's probably gonna keep me in Lightroom for the time being. All right, check it out. This is the reason why the library is such a big deal to me. If we import photos into Lightroom, what happens is you see this roll of photos and it tells you which ones you've already imported. But the more important thing it lets you do is it lets you full screen it to get a good idea of what photos you actually wanna import. So for me personally, for my workflow, this becomes a tool that allows me to cull my photos. I can get rid of the ones I don't want and I can bring in the ones I do want. Without this system, you have to use the Windows File Explorer or Finder on Mac, and it's just not as intuitive. Without this, you'd have to do your culling in the File Explorer or in Finder, mark the files you want or move them to a different folder, and then import them one at a time. Once you've imported your photo, you can get to work, which is very, very familiar, especially if you select the professional workspace. You'll see familiar sliders, familiar functions. Look guys, even Dehaze is here. You got your curves, your basic corrections, <laughs> the gang's all here. There is an addition of structure, just like Instagram, so if you've used it there, it's, it's quite similar. If you're not familiar with structure, it's basically just a combination of clarity and sharpening. Once you fiddle around a little bit more, you'll start to find a few key differences. One of the biggest differences, in my opinion, is the ability to add and manipulate layers. With this, Luminar almost takes on a hybrid Lightroom Photoshop combo here, and I gotta tell you, I like that. With the layers, you have the ability to apply whatever you want, whether it's a gradient or a mask or anything like that, and be able to toggle it on and off to see the changes you've made. And it also gives you a way to have non-destructive editing so you can really space everything out and see what you're doing. Luminar also has tons and tons of filters. I'm not gonna thumb through every one of them because we'll be here all day, but 
there's some really beautiful ones. There's also some, uh, some pretty silly ones, like this sunray thing. Wow, very nice. That's very cool. Okay, wait, that actually is pretty cool. Holy shit. There's also something known as the AI Sky Enhancer, which is pretty crazy and it's almost a little scary. According to their website, it's a revolutionary new tool to automatically enhance skies on photos using the power of artificial intelligence. So basically, you just yeet this slider around and it edits your photo, and honestly, it's surprisingly competent. Do I love the idea of a little robot editing my photos? I don't think so, but it's a cool thing and it could work well for some of you. I'll stick to doing my own editing though. We also have to talk about Luminar's relationship to Lightroom. You can actually set up your Lightroom to communicate with Luminar by going into your preferences, external editing, and then choosing Luminar as the application in the additional external editor section. That's a mouthful. Why do you want to do this? Well, if you set this up, you can still organize and archive everything within the Lightroom library, but then edit in Luminar. Organization and speed. Who would have thought having redundant photo editing programs would speed things up marginally? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna level with you. Opening and editing in two separate programs, it's probably not gonna speed up your workflow very much, but it is nice to know that the option is there. And apparently in the future, Luminar plans to add in bulk import from Lightroom. It looks like they're really going for Adobe's throat with some of these updates. And speaking of Lightroom and Adobe, one of my biggest concerns about the switch over was my presets. I've made a bunch of them myself, I've given some of them out on the channel. I have Peter McKinnon's Chris presets House from presets The Lonely Spec, pretty which good. is great. Okay, you get it, I have, I have a lot of presets. And there isn't really a simple way to bring them all over to Luminar. There is a bit of a workaround though, and props to the Explorographer for the idea. If you use the LUT mapping filter in Luminar, you can apply any LUT to your photo. The problem is, Lightroom presets aren't LUTs. <laughs> you can take that Lightroom preset though and convert it to a LUT with that Lightroom preset to LUT converter I spoke about in a previous video on this channel, and the link is in the description. Using that, you can convert all your Lightroom presets to LUTs and then just use the LUT mapping filter. Bingo, you got what you need in Luminar. Now, is this viable? Is this a viable workflow? Not really, in my opinion, unless you absolutely know what you want to bring in. Going through this process hundreds of times to convert all of these presets into LUTs, that sounds tedious and painful. And honestly, I'll stick with the slower speeds of Lightroom to avoid all that work. Especially if this is something that might be addressed in the future of Luminar. Working in this way also prevents you from just doing the simple tabbing through everything to see what it looks like. I mean, most times when I'm in Lightroom, I thumb through my presets and I say no 20 times before I say Oh yeah, that's the one. One last thing I want to touch on here is the fact that Luminar, in the grand scheme of things, isn't that old of a program. I mean, the PC version just came out this year, I think. So with two years under their belt, I mean, they have a ton of work to do in terms of rolling out features. The library is the biggest one in my opinion, but the camera support is just as important. Adobe is pretty good about that, but I haven't been using Luminar long enough to vouch for how quickly they support new files and formats. But if you give Luminar another couple of years, you might see the library, you might see the bulk import tools from Lightroom, you might be able to bring all your presets in, and in that time, they'll make it very easy for a lot of people to jump ship from Adobe to Luminar. So just to kind of wrap things up here, let's list out these pros and cons according to me. The pros. It's seemingly faster. Luminar is cheaper than Lightroom. It's got a similar feel to Lightroom the addition of adjustment layers. Tons of filters to play with. The cons. There's no library as of now. There's no legacy Lightroom presets. There is a workaround, but it's not ideal. It's a younger program and it needs more time to grow. Tons of filters to play with. I know I just listed that one as a pro, but it's one of those things that can really become a time sink of you just playing around with things, and it could lead you to disgustingly overprocess an image, which, you know, not a big fan of. All right, so let's tie a bow on this now. Will I be leaving Lightroom for Luminar? Probably not right now. Without the library, I can't see myself leaving Lightroom altogether. Is Luminar a formidable opponent? Oh yeah. Will I use it to edit? Absolutely, you better believe it. And here's a quick thought of mine to Adobe. If you don't get your shit together, 
and listen to your community to improve Lightroom, you're gonna see people jumping ship. I don't have any kind of loyalty to a software. If something comes out that will make my life as a creator easier, that's where I'm gonna go. And in the end, it's about the creation and not the tools you use to create it. Thank you so much for tuning in guys, and this week I'm not going to ask you to subscribe. I'm actually going to do my civic duty as a YouTuber and ask you to subscribe to PewDiePie. It's important that T-Series doesn't win, and I've memed Felix enough times on this channel to kind of owe him this, so yeah, go and do that. We can all make fun of him together. And you know what? Fuck it! While you're here, why don't you smash that subscribe button? You know what you want to, and you know what's good. Do something to that bell! And I bet my neighbors love it when I do these voiceovers. Thanks for watching. Hey. <coughs> oh God, dude. How did I not talk about that earlier? Luminar is cheaper than life. I, oh, let's turn off this heater and freeze for you guys the opposite of the of the summer video remember I had my air conditioner off and I turned it off well now it's fucking cold and I turned my heater off it kind of resembles a combination of clarity and sharpening and pork fried rice uh, not that last one I'm just kind of hungry it's lunchtime Ugh, God, that was a stupid fucking joke man why did I write that